Good evening and welcome to the September 26, 2016 special meeting of the Planning Board of the Town of Scarborough. Would you please rise from the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jay, could you please take the roll? Sure. Ms. Saunders? Yeah. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, out of, we're totally out of yeah. cycle here. Uh, Mr. Bealey, <laughs> here. Ms. Oglis? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Thank you. Uh, and just for the record, we'll show that uh, Mr. Bealey will be a full voting member this evening. The only real action item on our agenda, the Vesta Housing Development Corp requests an amended site plan for Southgate House 577 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U34, Lot 37. Would you like to recap this one, Jay? Sure. Uh, as I think most board members will recall, um, this, uh, this application came before the town a little over a year ago as a contract zone um, for the uh, site on U.S. Route 1, um, which is home of the Southgate House. Um, the applicants were seeking a contract zone to be able to develop an affordable housing project that was going to include redevelopment of the Southgate House as well as the development of a new multifamily building. Um, the application at that time and approval at that time had up to 50 units 
and um, of a particular mixture of uh, housing types, mostly one bedrooms. Um, a few months ago, the applicant appeared before the council, for the council an update in terms of the contract zone and um, some of the other uh, initiatives that are going on around uh, around the uh, property, um, and provide them an update in terms of the uh, sort of the re recalibration of the mix of dwelling types. So I'm sure the applicant will give you a, a, a more of a breakdown than I, but um, looking to go to 38 units and more of a two and three bedrooms uh, mixture um, than than the one bedroom. And so, as part of that conversation, staff noted that. Um, one of the contract zone requirements was that uh, so the, the uh, council allowed the site to be occupied by 55 parking spaces, provided that this board find that that be an adequate number of spaces based on the allowed uh, the use type. So given the the change of, of uh, bedroom types, because our ordinance requires one and a half spaces per one bedroom unit and two spaces per all other dwelling units. Given the, the, the new mixture, um, it seemed that it was worth it, you know, come back to the board and just be sure you're still comfortable with the um, parking calculations. And they also are proposing slight uh, modification to the building. The building's getting a little smaller. Um, and then the third and final thing I'll mention is uh, there was, there are two, two shed barns um, on the property and one was identified to potentially be removed um, and that was sort of left as an open item and the applicants have done their further due diligence on the property and are now eliminating that um, in consistent with the prior approvals but that's now going to be codified on the plan. So um, that's what I have for way of background and I'll turn back to you Mr. Chair. Thanks Jay. And does the applicant's representative have anything? Good evening. Um, Seth Marker with uh, Avesta Housing. I'm the de uh, Director of Real Estate Development there. And um, thank you for taking the time to um, be here tonight to um, help us try to make a few uh, modifications to our site plan and subdivision approvals from last year. Um, thank you, Jay. I think Jay did a good job of sort of summarizing kind of um, what we are here tonight to discuss. Um, essentially, because of some changes that were made to um, Maine Housing's uh, plan for the application for low-income housing tax credits, we had to sort of recalibrate this project a bit to try to <clears throat> keep it competitive for those tax credits. And so the result of that was essentially a reduction in the number of units from, from 50 to 38 units. But more importantly, it was their, their uh, goal to try to shift um, to more family size units, more two and three bedroom units. So as, as Jay indicated, um, we were previously, we had 50 units and most of those were one bedroom units. There were five two bedroom units and then there were also um, eight efficiencies or studios at the time. So we've now shifted that so that there's 38 units of which um, 12 of those are two bedroom, eight of those are three bedroom, and then you know, a reduction in the amount of one bedroom units to 14 <coughs> and a reduction in the amount of studios to four. And <clears throat> the intention there is essentially 50% of the units is what Maine Housing defines as family units. So because of that, we're here tonight to just seek a few modifications uh, reflected in line with that on our site plan approval. Those would essentially be um, that there would be, it would be reflected on the site plan that there is a reduction in the number of units on site uh, there's a reduction in the overall building size slightly. It's shortened up 10 or 15 feet. And uh, also confirmation of the removal of um, the one of the barns, one of the barns that's on the property and um, the associated extension of the fire lane now that that barn is not going to be in the way of that fire lane extending further onto the site. Um, Dan Riley of Spago Technics is here with, with us tonight and um, should you guys have some, some more technical re related questions, Dan's prepared to answer all, any of that and I, I can to the extent I, as, as well. Um, I think that is all I kind of wanted to go through at the moment and then just turn it back over to you guys really to ask questions and, and have us answer any more, any more specifics. Great. Thank you. 
Okay. Corey, if I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to mention, um, board members, uh, you will have received a memo from Bill Bray, who did our peer review traffic, uh, reviewed their analysis and uh, found it was adequate. And one thing that was reflected in both Mr. Bray and staff's comments was about delineating or showing the area of the easement. Um, and actually, in com consultation with uh, uh, Mr. Riley from Sebago Technics, he pointed it out to us. We just were unable to see it. <laughs> so you can ignore that question. It is shown and noted as it was with the original approval. Okay. So apologize and for that. One, one other thing I just did um, remember that I wanted to let you know. I'm sure you guys you probably do know this, but I'll just mention it for the record that we did go before the, the council on July 13th and essentially as a courtesy, since the contract zone was not technically changing since our approvals were, we were up to 50 units and we're less than that, so the contract zone didn't change, but we wanted to, as a courtesy, go before the council, make them aware of these changes that we're discussing, just trying to keep this whole process, just trying to keep everyone informed in the loop and, and you know, the reasoning for all this, just kind of keep it all as transparent as possible. And we're still extremely excited about this project, um, but we did, because of these changes, have to because of these changes by main housing have to try to figure out a way to keep it competitive and make it um, hopefully eventually secure these tax credits and move forward. Thank you. Um, we do have the opportunity for a public comment on this item. If there's anyone who'd like to come up and put in their two cents. Seeing none, we'll turn to the board. And again, this has been pretty well recapped and it's you know, it's been fully vetted, um, just a couple of fairly straightforward changes here, but if anyone has any questions or comments, Nick? Yeah. Real quick, um, how many bedrooms did you have total in the original proposal? So in the original proposal, there was, you have to, Jay, you have to remind me, the studios count as, as one bedroom yeah, in that one scenario? Bedroom. Correct. So there would have been, um, in that instance, fifty-five, forty-seven plus eight is fifty-five, correct? Yeah. Fifty-five bedrooms. All right. So you had fifty-five bedrooms. Now you move into sixty-six bedrooms. If my math adds up, so you have a, a little bit of an increase in your bedrooms. I understand the family aspect of it doesn't mean they all have cars just because you have a bedroom, right? But um, and you have fifty-five parking spaces. Correct. Was there any effort to, um, and I know this, there was a traffic study, but I think at one point when you were here previously, you had provided us a, um, an example of other projects um, and how the ratio worked out. Do you know if the number of bedrooms here fell within that same ratio for the parking spaces? You were able to show us pretty, pretty well whether or not 55 spaces could work with X 66 bedrooms. Or I'm sorry, 55 bedrooms. Do you know if the 66, bed, 66 bedrooms kind of falls within that same range? Yeah, I mean, so, and, and Dan is definitely can speak to this. I mean, in general, the, the data that we provided previously um, as compared to the amount of parking, so that I guess the data that we provided previously, a lot of that comes from our other, other projects in our, in our portfolio that have family style units and, um, or have family units. And we also tried to make them, or we also tried to select properties that weren't um, you know, that were, that were in the same sort of suburban style that weren't necessarily, you know, urban or downtown Portland. And I think if you, if you look at the memo that is in your packet, in general, the ratios, um, whether you look at it per bedroom or per unit, um, the data from our portfolio suggests that we're provi that we are providing considerably more parking than, than, than we, than our data would suggest we need. And I think that's still very consistent with, with, this proposal of 38 units or, or was it 66? 66. 66 bedrooms. So I think it's still consistent with that. And um, one of the things we did look at uh, was that actually per the ordinances within or per the parking requirements prescriptively as calculated in, in, in Scarborough, um, which more look at per unit rather than per bedroom, this this proposal actually gets gets us closer to the requirements that that we would meet per per the ordinance. Okay. Hope does that help answer your question? It does. Thank you. Okay. 
And then um, I think just one last question, which is, uh, are any of the um, renovations that you had proposed uh, to the <coughs> exterior of the historical building, are any of that changing, or they're still on scheduled to be completed? None of, none of that would change. The historic building, the the, um, the farmhouse, is the renovations that would be done to that um, would still be consistent with with the historic tax credit program. It would still be uh, consistent with the state historic preservation office and, and all that's required by that. So, um, and that a lot of that gets more further detailed as we go through um, the part two process, which is which is more scoping and really drilling into the details. But yeah, none of that has changed as per this proposal. This this proposal or this these amendments purely have to do with the new building, okay. um, which ha is changing from is now a 30 unit building as opposed to a um, 30 it was a thir 42 units prior. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Well, yeah, um, I want to follow up with what Nick in a moment, but where is the status of the funding? It, it, because it, it was the last time you were here, it was like years in advance. So what is the status of the funding? So so we're applying again this year for the low-income housing tax credits from Maine Housing. Um, we're also applying, we've, we've applied for a couple other grants, which are mostly supplementary financing. The, the primary financing is through the, it's through the tax credit program with Maine Housing. Those, those applications are due at the end of October. Uh, we'll submit then. We would, we would find out more about that financing before the end of the year. If we were successful getting it, we would start, we would start construction probably in the, in the summer or early fall of, of next year of 2017. And then it's about a year construction schedule and so we would, you know, the, the property would come online in, in, in the summer, fall of 2018. So you'll, you'll know by the end of this year whether you get the funding or not? Yep. Oh, okay. Because yep. that, that wasn't clear last time in the presentation. It was okay. like, you know, we need this approval, but we're not sure how, when, how, where, when, you know. And I think the, I mean, that, that's, you know, we don't know whether we'll be successful getting the tax credits. We're trying to keep the project competitive, which is why we made these changes. It's our view that that these changes will continue to make it competitive for those tax credits, and and we're we're j as motivated as anybody um, to make this happen sooner rather than later. So, but you know, we will keep trying to get to get this project funded one way or the other. Okay, you know, following up with Nick, is 66 Nick? Okay, but on, on here it says uh, 50 to 38 units. Does that mean multi bedrooms in, in, in a given unit? Is that what I'm um, to understand? Is that what I'm? Yeah, okay, okay. It, so, so if there's some family, I can understand the parking situation then because there, it would seem to me that there would may only be one vehicle in some of these units or, or no vehicles at all. A um, couple other things that uh, I'm sure will be touched upon further, but uh, uh, s s with some of this new renovation, uh, one of the comments from staff was on the impervious area and, and you know, what's going to be disturbed and what's not going to be disturbed. Has that been clarified for staff or not? Do you have a... Dan might be able to answer that better than I. Um, the, we will we'll clarify it on the plan. The staff's comment was that we had noted on the plan what the change in that impervious area was, and it's reduced slightly. I, I honestly don't know what the number is, um, but the building essentially got about, it's kind of stepped in the rear of the building, and, and one leg got reduced by about 15 feet, the other got reduced by 11. So there's a couple thousand square feet overall that the, uh, that the impervious area was reduced. Um, and that, um, more significantly, all occurred in the end of the site that was in that shoreland zone where we're restricted to no more than 20 percent impervious cover. So that aspect of it has improved because we've moved. Okay. The impervious area that was eliminated was at the far end of the site and now that's gotten shorter. So the disturbance has been reduced and the, and the footprints have been reduced in that end of the site. And do either one of you know about the easement and where that stands? 
the easement is shown on the drawing and it's unchanged from the original approval. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Susan? You have to have over there. <coughs> <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee today. Something that would show me where the barn was that is not no longer going to be. I'm just curious. So if you remember from last year, there are two barns on the site. Um, one is here that's going to be connected to the new building, and that's going to remain. And then there was a second barn that was positioned here. Okay. That was uncertain at the time because of its condition, whether it made sense to try to restore it or some other use. So the applicants determined that that is not going to be used. The okay. condition that was on the plan was that if that barn were to be removed, the fire lane would be extended to where the footprint of the barn ended. Mm -hmm. The revised plan reflects that. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. Um, I don't have any. Questions. I think this is a. I understand why it's being done. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to make it um, viable. I actually enjoy the fact that we're going to get more people and fewer cars. Not total, but spread out. I think it's fine. I haven't got any real problems with it. And we'll, we'll take a look at some of the more nitty gritty details after you get your financing and come back. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Roger? Um, actually, I, th I, I like what you, what's going on. I, I think it's actually an improvement because the parking was going to be tight before, so this improves that. Can I assume you're going to change, you're going to go with the eight foot wide parking spots instead of nine? I know we, we talked about that as an option. I don't know whether we designate that now or whether we, if, uh, no, right now the, all the parking on the site is as it was approved okay. originally. Um, and like we talked about a year ago, um, there are uh, 55 parking spaces shown on the drawings today. And if the board were to request or require additional spaces, we can increase that number to 58 just by striping, narrowing some of the striping in this bank of parking <coughs> here, here, and there. Fit one additional space. Those would have to be those spaces would be reduced to between eight and eight, eight and a half feet. Uh, if the board wants the plan to reflect that, um, we could do that. We we would ask to do that as a condition of approval. Okay. But right now, there's 55 parking spaces, the same as the approved plan. Okay. Um, just just for clarification, for my own sake, because um, I don't know, I don't understand the um, you know the um, units. Are the are there restrictions on who can live in these units? For instance, and what I'm getting at is, for instance, like the three bedroom units, can, is it possible to have, say, three adults living in there, or does it have to be like a family to qualify? I'm just thinking if it's three adults, it's probably going to be three cars, you know? Yeah. Um, the, boy, that's a good question. I'm just trying to think for a second. To, it's not my completely my expertise, to okay. be honest with you. I'm more on the development side rather than on the sort of property management or compliance side. Um, I suspect. I, I suspect there's implications because it's based on income and it's, it's a household income. Okay. So um, I, I, I'm only hesitant just because I don't want to. Sure. inform the board erroneously but my sense is that it's a household income so I, I don't I think it's a family okay. set up that I don't think there could be the potential to have you know three or four roommates in there I think there would there's a lot of restrictions that would that would look at that um, and I don't think it's allowed okay I, I would be more than happy to to you know try to get a follow to you know get the answer to that concrete and follow up with the board if you would okay. like I think your answer is probably correct, but um, I do know that there, you know, there's an overall income restriction, uh, which is how the rent is determined. So, yeah. by by any and all means, that there there would there would have to be an income overall income restriction in that sense. Okay. The only uh, last question I have, and it may not be appropriate right now, but have you made any determination on the porch? Remember, there was some discussion about whether the porch was worth. 
Yes, the what we've been told by um, the historic, by the State Preservation, Historic Preservation Office is that the porch has been deemed significant historically. And so um, it, it's our intention now that, that the porch would be preserved. I think the only thing that might change that is if um, we determine at some point along the way that it's so structurally compromised that it, it, it can't be saved, in which case there'd be another conversation with the, the historic folks. A lot of that gets driven by the Park Service, um, and we're somewhat um, have to follow their, their lead on that. Okay. I'm all set. Thanks. Robin? Yeah. Is there any um, historic value associated with the barn that's coming down? Probably at one point there was, but one thing that it, there's a, a few things. One is the overall structure is compromised, but actually the interior mm -hmm. is has been somewhat compromised too. Um, it, it was really chopped up and it's, it's a little unclear. Um, it's probably not, not unclear what the original use was, but it looked like it had been maybe being used for um, impromptu living quarters and other things in there. And so um, based on that, they, they, they um, when I say they, the, the historic folks who looked at it um, determined that, that it's, in, its historic integrity has been compromised, mm -hmm. um, both interior and exterior. Okay. And that it's it's more really of a liability to try to save it then. So will it be moved or demolished? It will be demolished. Okay. And so um, the existing use right now is just that it's vacant and it's, yes. and it's been you've done a building materials survey to make sure that there's nothing inside that needs to be removed before it's demolished. We would we would we have done a preliminary survey. We would do a little more before we Great. before we yeah we wouldn't demo anything before we determine that there's, you know, it can safely be done in terms of materials and all that stuff. Right. Or weird storage that might be in there kind of a thing. You, you'll, yeah, it would get cleaned out first, yeah. Okay. Excellent. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you for the, the parking analysis. That information is very helpful, particularly breaking it down sort of per bedroom and looking at it. Um, those ratios, and I think anytime, anytime we can, you can help us justify. At least in my mind, anytime you can help us justify less parking um, and still have a functional, a well-functioning property, that's a that's a win. So, uh, just in terms of minimizing imperv impervious surface and just sort of having um, a sea of asphalt. So, mm -hmm. um, my day job is actually in this industry, so I know exactly what you're talking about when you refer to the state housing agencies and their their funding programs and those do certainly change a little bit from year to year as the priorities shift and um, so I, I fully appreciate that, that can be kind of a moving target and sometimes you have to tweak your project a little bit to get your credits per bedroom and other things <coughs> to where you can be competitive but I'm glad that you were able to um, get to where you you feel confident without having to make wholesale changes to the project um, and I think it's certainly um, even though it's not directly into the purview of this board, I think it's um, everyone agrees that it's a it's a priority for the town, and um, I think it'll be nice to have um, you know new residents in that that particular part of town uh, to continue to sort of activate that that area as it continues to transform. Um, so definitely wish you the best of luck with that. Um, also glad to hear that the decision was made on removing the barn that had been as you probably recall, a concern of the board, sort of a, even though we, we voted for approval uh, a year ago, I think there was a little bit of unease at the time about leaving that barn there, um, knowing that it might prove to be a liability. So um, I think that uh, knowing that what the plan is for that gives us a little bit, little bit uh, more peace of mind. So um, beyond that, I don't think I have anything. I think um, we've addressed the few questions we've had and I will uh, put a motion forward. I move to approve the site plan amendment application of Avesta Housing Development Corporation for the multifamily development at 577 U.S. Route 1, which was originally approved on August 24, 2015. The proposal, as described in the submission prepared by Sebago Technics dated September 16, 2016, reduces the number of dwelling units on site from 50 to 38 reduces the overall building footprint of the new multifamily structure and includes removal of one of the existing barns in accordance with the plan note on the approved plan dated August 21, 2015. 
This approval modifies the traffic impact fees associated with the development to be, p be paid prior to the issuance of a building permit. The revised traffic impact fee total is $62,431.70. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be revised to address the remaining staff comments. The plan set may be reviewed and approved by the Planning Department. All other conditions and findings of the August 21st, 2015 approval remain in effect as applicable. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you, and again, good luck. Again, I just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their evening tonight to, to hear us and be able to get this done. So puts us in a good place to kind of keep moving forward. So I really appreciate it. Thank right. you. Thank good you. Luck. Thank you. Good luck. Have a good night. Watch the debate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Glad we're not going up going up directly against that. <laughs> right. We have a town planner's report. Uh, don't have anything not to report. To we'll be having a workshop here on the complete we'll streets. Save the uh, report on complete streets to the workshop. Yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative amendments. Nothing to. No. Nope. Correspondence? Planning board comments? Yeah. Um, as I shared with you, uh, my house is on the market, and there is a possibility that I may be moving from Scarborough. And I intend on staying on the board until that becomes finalized. But I'm sitting here and I'm thinking the importance of the Transportation Committee. And I think that I would feel comfortable if somebody else took over that my position on that committee because it's a very important committee and a lot has been accomplished but there's still a lot more being discussed and uh, I, I can't put the time in that I have in the past so I, I, I think that since we have all of the existing members here that it might be a good idea to uh, point somebody else to that committee. As the planning board's representative? As the planning board representative, exactly. Okay. All right, so give some thought to that. And we'll uh, bait you in with a workshop on complete streets, so you can really. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a great, great setup. All right. Any other comments, Roger? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if um, you guys have been following the uh, discussions over in Westport with Rocky Rivera's project. Yep. But one thing was uh, indicated at, at one of the most recent reports was about the lack of impact fees, and you know I think that's a very significant thing. And they're, they're running into trouble right now because they apparently don't have any over there. So I just want to applaud whoever came up with the idea in this town of, you know, using uh, employing impact fees. It was a, it was a wise choice. Whoever came up with it and whatever body approved it. So. All right. Anything else? <coughs> Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Do we, do we leave now? Yeah. Chambers B. <laughs>